Shiela. This is regarding cholangitis. Now the next two important topics are primary biliary cirrhosis and primary sclerosing cholangitis. Primary biliary cirrhosis and primary sclerosing cholangitis. These two are the autoimmune disorders of wild ducks. Okay, autoimmune. Okay, with PBC, as with all autoimmune disorders, it is more common in females. Associated with some antibodies, that is anti-mitochondrial antibodies. Okay, and there is autoimmune damage to the intrahepatic bile ducts. So there is damage to intrahepatic bile ducts only. Okay, now when there is intrahepatic bile duct damage, so there will be presence of. Uh, Due to this biliary damage and biliary cirrhosis, there will be presence of jaundice, pruritus or itching and fatigue. Now, what happens in uh, any jaundice normally? Initially, there will be jaundice and as the level of obstruction or as the level of jaundice increases, gradually the patient will start developing itching or pruritus okay but here in primary biliary cirrhosis pruritus precedes jaundice it means that initially there is pruritus and then the patient is developing jaundice and this fatigue is very characteristic for primary biliary cirrhosis okay now there is a progressive damage to the intrahepatic bile ducts and there is a classical uh, histopathology finding classical pathology finding on liver biopsy obviously there will be a biliary cirrhosis but the classical finding is florid duct lesion and what we see in florid duct lesion, there is presence of lymphocytic infiltration and granulomatous inflammation. There is uh, hyperlipidemia also in some patients. And this hyperlipidemia can manifest as xanthelasma and xanthomas, etc. Now, the classical pathology finding is seen in liver biopsy. So, the investigation of choice or the investigations of choice is liver biopsy. Along with that liver biopsy, we can also get this anti-mitochondrial antibodies done. What is the treatment? Treatment is liver transplantation. Okay. So the treatment is liver transplantation and the indication for liver transplantation is severe pruritus or fatigue. Okay. Severe pruritus fatigue are among the indications for liver transplantation. If there are other features of cirrhosis that is also indication but the classical indication for liver transplantation for PBC is severe pruritus or severe fatigue. This is regarding primary biliary cirrhosis. Normally as we know that almost all of the autoimmune disorders are seen more commonly in females. 
but this primary sclerosing cholangitis is more common in males so next topic is primary sclerosing cholangitis primary sclerosing cholangitis is more common in males there is presence of multiple strictures in the intrahepatic as well as extrahepatic bile ducts multiple strictures in intrahepatic and extrahepatic bile ducts okay both so there is a classical uh, uh, decrease in branching due to the uh, strictures in the intrahepatic and extrahepatic bile ducts there will be uh, this kind of picture seen in uh, the mri where all the intrahepatic there will be strictures in both the intrahepatic as well as extrahepatic bile ducts and there is a reduced branching kind of structures multiple everywhere and reduced branching pattern known as a pruned tree appearance on cholangiogram this i'll show you the picture later on pruned tree appearance on cholangiogram now there is a classical import or very important point in primary sclerosing cholangitis that it is associated with ulcerative colitis first point it is associated with ulcerative colitis second point treatment for uc ulcerative colitis and psc are not associated with each other and they are mutually exclusive basically so and the treatment is classically associated with erythema nodosum okay if there is more erythema nodosum this means that the ulcerative colitis is not getting treated properly okay on the other hand primary sclerosing cholangitis is increasing even if there is a very good control of ulcerative colitis even then the psc can increase and if there is a very good treatment for psc then also ulcerative colitis can increase okay so they are mutually exclusive and this is very important so what happens is generally there is a patient who is having a long standing history of diarrhea and uh, after some point of time the patient start develop fe developing the features of cholangitis jaundice pain in the abdomen and uh, sometimes on this and then on mri or mrct we see that there is a picture of primary sclerosing cholangitis normally ulcerative colitis is present in more than 70% patients of psc okay so I mean majority of the patient of psc they have ulcerative colitis whereas psc is seen in 5 to 6 percent patients of ulcerative colitis okay another point it is associated with hla b8 and dr3 and smoking is protective and smoking is protective in both ulcerative colitis as well as psc okay now it is more common in male patients patient generally presents with clinical features patient presents with cholangitis most common lft abnormality is asymptomatic elevation of ggt so if there is a patient with ulcerative colitis and having a raised ggt then we can suspect that this patient might be having primary sclerosing cholangitis we should think in that lens okay and patient can develop cholangitis 
and few patients can develop CBD stones, acute pancreatitis. or development of cholangiocarcinoma okay now due to this uh, due to this uh, inflammation there is thickening of the bile ducts and uh, the cut section of the bile duct shows this kind of picture which is known as onion skin appearance on cut section and i told you that the destruction of the terminal intrahepatic branches leads to a decrease in branching pattern also known as pruned tree appearance okay now how to diagnose this disease the diagnosis is by mrcp or ercp among these two the investigation of choice is mrcp gold standard investigation is ercp on ercp we can see uh, this kind of picture and this kind of picture is pseudo diverticular appearance pseudo diverticular of the bile duct or beaded appearance why because of presence of multiple strictures okay and what is the treatment of choice the treatment of choice in this case is liver transplantation if the patient is waiting for liver transplantation in the meantime we can give high dose udca if patient is waiting for liver transplantation in the meantime we can give high dose arso deoxycholic acid okay arso deoxycholic acid can be given okay so and the treatment of psc does not affect the treatment of ulcerative colitis so this is regarding primary sclerosing cholangitis now you can see this picture the question will come uh, like this like there is a patient who is a 40 year old male patient having complaints of diarrhea since 20 years of age and now the patient is developing cholangitis or fever and uh, lft is showing some abnormalities mrcp is done mrcp is showing this kind of picture identify the diagnosis the diagnosis in this case is psc because you can see there is stricture here 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 everywhere there is stricture normally what you will see that the bile duct will be dilated gradually there will be if there is a distal biliary obstruction normally there will be a bile duct which will be dilated massively and as we go up gradually there will be decrease in the size of the bile ducts if there is uh, obstruction here at the level of hilum then the cpd will be normal lower cpd proximally there will be dilatation of the biliary radicals here what we are seeing is that there is stricture here also then there is dilatation then there is stricture again there is problem so there are presence of multiple stricture in the common hepatic duct common bile duct also there is presence of multiple structures so which is giving pseudo diverticular or beaded kind of appearance 